Welcome. Today's webinar is um, on Tatara, and program management is kind of our major theme, but we will be getting into some other areas as well. Um, what we're talking about is how you can package learning in different ways. That, that's probably a better description of, of how we're going to do it today. Um, my name is Dr. Tammy Frame. I'm the Chief Education Officer at eClass for Learning. And um, this is my contact information. And I will be recording this webinar. And after the webinar, you will receive a link with a copy of the recording. And my contact information will be on there. And if you have additional questions, feel free to contact me. Today we are using GoToWebinar as our webinar platform, and there is an area where you can um, ask questions. So feel free to expand that and put those questions in there throughout the webinar. I really love questions. Um, even if I don't know the answer, we'll research them and put them in the follow-up email for you. I think it makes the webinars a lot more um, lively and more applicable to the people. And usually um, I learn a little bit too. So please feel free to put in questions throughout. It's a lot of fun. eClass for Learning um, provides a lot of e-solutions for our clients. Um, we provide LMS solutions. And today we're going to talk about one of the LMSs we support, and that's Totora. We help um, clients with course development. We can do professional development on best practices in the online world. We provide e-commerce solutions for our clients. We do hosting, marketing, and training on how to use our solutions as well. So if you have any of those needs, please contact us. We'd be happy to help. Okay, today I put down some vocabulary that we're going to start out with just so we um, are on the same page because every LMS calls things different um, and um, I'll be referring to these things throughout um, the presentation because this is different ways that we can group learning. Um, so one way is a program, and that's probably our, our central thought for today. And a program is a group of learning. And this, you can have it designated so that it happens in a certain order if you want to. It doesn't have to be, but it can. You can also have, this is new in Totoro um, 9, we can now have reoccurring courses. Um, these are courses that recur at a set time frame for the entire group. So let's say you're going to have a compliance training that everybody needs to take the first week in September every year. We can have it recur and um, that learning um, will re-enroll everybody every year at the same time or whatever audience group you have, okay? So then the next one is very um, close, and sometimes it might be better to use certification. I think there are some limitations in recurring courses. Um, if you have more than one set of learning going on, then you really want it in a certification, because I think you can only have one learning path in recurring courses. And a certification, there's a learning requirement that has to be met. And it could be a whole program can be part of a certification. Um, it could have competencies, could have courses, could have face-to-face -face learning. Um, it can have a lot of things in it. And um, you track if certain criteria is met to receive the cert certification. And oftentimes certifications have time restrictions that expire after a certain amount of time and are tracked by the individual learner. So let's say I take a CPR course online and it's good for two years and maybe the two years starts when I successfully complete the course and my date might be different than a colleague's date and then um, maybe a month before my expiration of my certification 
The system will automatically alert me that my certification is coming due and it might um, re-enroll me for to be recertified. Okay, so that would be a certification. Okay, uh, related thought that we will talk about probably earlier in the webinar are audiences. So audiences are a specific group of learners and audiences can be set up to be dynamic based on maybe something in their profile or their position or what department they work in or something like that. Or they could be static. It could be a group of learners that you upload in a, in a CSV file, perhaps. Um, so either way. And learning can be assigned to audiences. And reports can be pulled on audiences. Okay. And so programs can be pushed in this way, too. So can certifications and re recurring courses. All right. Now, um, sometimes it gets confusing, certification versus certificates. Certificates are a PDF that you download at the completion of a course. Okay, and someone asked in the pre-webinar questions if I could also cover competencies, and that was a great thing to ask because competencies are mixed into all of these things. And that's when we have certain learning criteria that we want people to demonstrate that they can do. Okay, and I'll be talking about where competencies fit in to all of the things that um, that that we have above. Okay, and what makes this a little bit um, confusing sometimes is that all of these things are interconnected. So because of the competency question, I think that I may start with that um, in, in Totara. So I'm going to um, exit out of my PowerPoint and I have my test demo here. And I just want to talk about kind of under the hood Totara and how it works a little bit and what you might want to set up before you get into your programs and your certifications and your recurring courses because you might want to link these things, um, okay? So um, one thing that I often um, suggest that people do when they're first setting up their Totara is to set up their hierarchies. And so if you are a site admin, you can do this. And site admin can go um, under their site admin block to hierarchies. And there are several um, hierarchies that you can have. Usually, I start with organizations, and um, yeah, just checking that, and manage organizations. And so I have one here, um, and I would just add a new one. You can have multiple organization frameworks. So let's just say a school district. Most of us went to school. That's kind of an easy one. So you might have district office, you might have, um, let's see, under that you might have the high school, a middle school, elementary school A, elementary school B, and elementary school C. And the reason we want to um, have these frameworks is that, again, we can push out learning to these groups and we can also pull reports to this group. So if I had a training that I wanted all district office to go to, um, everybody's going to be assigned where they fit in the organization hierarchy. And I, they would know that a user works there. And you could push out learning to everybody at district office, for example. Or if I wanted to know if everybody at district office did their compliance training, I'd be able to pull that because I have it set up in my hierarchy. So that's one type of hierarchy or grouping that we can have for pushing out learning and for pulling reports. 
Another one that you can have, so not only does a person have maybe a, um, a department or a location that they work, but they probably have a position. And so same thing, you can have um, school positions, I'll put, and you can have multiple frameworks. I do have some clients that have that for various reasons. So let's say we have a school, let's say we have a district administrator, school administrator, and a teacher. Okay. So now I could pull out a compliance training and push it out to all teachers, let's say, or get a report about all teachers. So um, the more that you set up these groups, the more that you'll have to choose from when creating a program or a certification and how to push it out. Okay, now the question was about competencies. So here's another one, and I made one quickly called 21st Century Skills, and I was just adding to it before the webinar. And um, we can add a new competency, and so we'll call this um, Global Awareness. Okay. So now um, in my competency framework, and you might have several frameworks. You might have like one for one, one position, a set of competencies, and then another set of competencies for another position. And that can be tied in many, many places. Competencies can be um, tied to courses. Um, they can be tied to learning plans. They can be tied to programs, which we're going to um, do today, um, and, and lots of things. So they, and we can also get reports on them, and individual reports, or group reports, and so on. So um, let's just make sure that that's in there. Okay, so we have one competency that we can choose from later on. Now, um, another component, so once you have your hierarchy set up, that's a great thing for setting up your programs that, you'll, that you can then link to them. So you want those set up for, um, for types of audiences. Now let's say you have another group that doesn't really fit. Let's say maybe I have new employees. And, you know, that's bigger than they might be in all different locations and all different positions. So I can create a custom audience. And to do that, I'd be a site admin. I'd go to accounts. And I'd go to audiences. And then from here, um, we've got add a new audience. You can name it. So I'll put new employees and I can decide if I'm going to put it under if it's for the whole system or if it goes under a category that I've created. I'm going to leave it at system today. Um, now I can decide if it's a dynamic audience. So maybe um, dynamic would mean that if I set up something like Everybody with the position of doctor is going to be in this audience. Um, then it could be a dynamic, and it would go out and look at all the profiles and add those people dynamically. And if a new user came in with that position, they would be added to that group. Or you can do like a static set one where you upload a CSV file. Okay, and I'll save that. And... Um, this one, okay, or I can pick members. So we'll add two people to that audience from our list. Okay, um, and then it asks some questions about what you want to enroll this um, audience in. And there, um, you could have them into a course, a program, or a certification. But we need to have courses, programs, and certifications set up ahead of time for it to, to add them. And we can always come back to accounts or users, accounts, and audiences and assign those things to 
specific audiences um, later on. You can also have a learning plan that you created pushed out to these different audiences. Okay, um, so audiences are an important thing to understand. We'll see that in a couple places. As I mentioned, um, you need to have courses, programs, and certifications set up to link those things to an audience. Um, so let's quickly look at a course and some things that you might want to do in a course. Now a course can be part of a program or a certification and it could be reoccurring too. So everything's kind of linked in several different ways. And what I hope that you leave today with is um, a tool set of what's possible of how to group learning and um, maybe a better understanding of which one to pick for your um, specific use case scenario. So um, on my courses, I will go, actually I'll go to an existing course here. And once you've got your course set up, I just want to point out something in the course settings. So under the course admin, under um, a couple things, you can tie competencies to your course. So we could say um, that this course fits the global awareness competency. Okay, and then um, I could tie that to that course, that learning. We also probably, for programs and certifications to work well, probably want to um, define how do we know that a user has actually met all of the criteria to successfully complete a course. So um, there is course completion settings. And I have some options um, when, a when all conditions are met or any are met, okay? And then it has, it automatically picks up um, the activities in the course. So I'll say that the quiz has to be complete, okay? And I could even say that they have to get a certain course grade and put that in here, okay? And then um, that's how we'll know that this course is complete. And if this course becomes part of a program of learning, that's one of the things it's going to look for, for completion of the program. And if it's part of a certification, we might define that it has to successfully complete this course to be certified. Okay, see how it all links together. So there may be some things that you do it, first of all, to create courses if they're going to be part of um, programs and certifications. You may want to tie certain competencies to a course. You may want to define course completions and, and what will count as a complete completed course. Okay. Um, feel free to jump in with questions if, if you have them. I've been working with Totor quite a while, so it makes sense to me, but it is a little bit um, of a spider web at first because everything is connected to everything else it sometimes feels like. Okay, so that would be how we create a course. How do we actually create a program of learning, which can be sequential, like a group of learning that somebody has to complete. Like maybe for the new um, employee orientation, there are several courses and things and policies they need to review and things that they need to do before they have finished their new employee orientation. And we could group all those things together, for instance, in a program. So, under site admin, again, this is something that a site administrator can do. We go to courses and then um, manage programs. Okay, so I have a couple programs here and you can see if um, you can organize these in categories if you want to. And then um, you can go from there. So um, if I want to add a new program, add a new program. 
Okay, and then it wants to know what um, category do I want it to be. And I'll put this as the new employee program. NEP. Can put an ID number if I want. Um, anything in Totoro that is has a red asterisk is required. Everything else is optional. ID numbers would be necessary if you're going to have completion records um, integrate with other systems. And we do have integration specialists that help with that if you ever need it. Okay. So um, I can put a summary if I want that people could see. I could put like a brochure in here if I wanted to. Um, a note that they will see at the end of the program. If it's ready to be visible and published or not. And um, I can choose a little icon for it. So um, we'll call this then we'll use that one for new employees. And if we're going to allow, um, let's say a new employee for some reason doesn't finish in time, could they ask their manager for an extension and could the manager um, go ahead and um, grant that extension it, or deny it? Um, so that those are the details and we save those changes. Now, because I had it checked as visible, it gives me a big um, caution. It's saying that, you know, because it's live, it could affect these learners. Um, and because I haven't assigned it to anybody, um, then it won't affect anybody. But you do have to be careful if you do start assigning it to groups it, and you do have it visible, they will see it immediately. And then later, if you went in and tweaked it, which you can do, um, maybe you add another course or something, it'll give you a caution because now maybe people that thought they were done, their status is going to maybe change to not done if you added additional requirements. So be very, very careful about um, editing live programs once they're in play with live learners, okay? Because it's very dynamic and, and it would change in real time. For me, it's not a big deal because I haven't assigned this to anybody, so it's really not affecting anybody. But maybe you, while you're working on it, you want to make it invisible, especially if you've assigned learners or groups to it, okay? Um, so that's what that error message is. In Totara, you kind of have these wizards of tabs along the top. So we figured out the big overarching details. Now it wants to know, well, what content goes in this program? And so I have some options. I could do a set of courses. I could add a competency. Now I will put a caution there. If you add a competency and it's linked and there are any courses that have that competency, it will automatically pull it in, okay? So sometimes I just do set of courses. Um, you could have a course that you want to be reoccurring too. So I will do a set of courses. And now all of the courses that I've already created, so that's why, um, you know, I might want to do this ahead of time. I can add, so I'll add this one, and then um, let me add another one so that we have a series of learning. Okay, so I've got my two courses in here now, and now I can call the sequence of learning, call it new employee training, and then I can decide, do the learners have to do one course, all courses, some courses, all courses are optional. Um, what are your rules going to be for this program? And I'm going to say they have to do all courses. Okay. And um, I'm going to say um, the minimum time required. And I'll save those changes. Save all changes. Okay. And then um, here, the next thing is, who are we going to assign it to? 
And so remember, once we do this because it's visible, they would automatically um, start seeing it unless I click that invisible at the beginning. So make sure you're ready for that. So in that those hierarchies, I could say I'm going to do it in the organization. I could say I'm going to do it by position. Um, an organization might be like a department. Positions might be a, um, a job title. Audiences are those groups that I set up. You could also now in Total Run 9 pick, up, pick out managers, and the system knows who a manager is. Um, it's a specific role they have, plus um, they are anybody who oversees other people, and the system kind of knows that. Or I can even just put in emails or pick from a pick list, pick individuals. Okay, so I have several different ways to do this. For today, I think we'll practice audiences. So I can add an audience. And um, now it says, okay, which audience do you want? So I have a new employee audience, and I'm going to pick them. And I could set a due date, um, either a hard date, or if they're going to be um, new employees, maybe I give them seven business days from their first login um, to, to finish. Okay, so everybody gets seven business days, or I guess they'd be seven days um, from their first login to finish. Okay. Um, and we've got two learners set in there. Okay. Now, we can stay. Let's just make sure um, save changes. And I can add um, more groups if I wanted to. Then um, the next part, okay. <laughs> And it says here, you've got, be careful, you're making changes now, and you've got two learners that are um, actively assigned this, and one is active in, in the course, and there's one exception, okay. And so then um, you can also change your alerts. So they give you some custom ones, but you can change the text. That's sort of like a mail merge. So it says you have been enrolled in the program, and then it'll put the name that you put in there. Um, you are now enrolled in the program, and if you wanted to say more, you could. If you wanted the alert to get a copy of the manager, and you wanted a special note to the manager, you can do that. And then down here, um, here are some exceptions that get um, that need to be resolved. And here are some more um, notifications that you can set up. So unenrollment, program due, program overdue, program completed, course set due, learner follow-up. Okay, so those are, and you can customize those things. Um, exception report. Oh, I should probably, I can leave because I didn't make any changes. Um, okay, so this person, um, for some reason, they're saying might need extra time. I, I think that might be, too, because she already completed it, perhaps. So they're, they're saying, do you want to give her more time seeing that she already completed it, perhaps? Um, the other thing that we have here is the overview. So all of our settings we can quickly review. And that comes out on the overview page, okay? And so then that program of learning would be automatically set um, to these. And, and here, um, this one would happen before this one, okay? Um, so that's a, a program of learning. And feel free, again, you guys have been a quiet group to put any questions that you have for me. So um, we'll move on to our next topic, which is very similar in how you set it up, and that's certifications. So certifications, just to review, is a way to um, 
have things expire and then have people re-enroll that they have to be certified in. So a lot of people in the healthcare industry are using certifications of our clients a lot, okay? So um, again, you if you're a site administrator, you go to site admin. It's hidden under courses because it's considered a type of learning and manage right under programs, manage certifications. And it looks really similar to um, programs with a few changes. So it wants to know like um, what category do you want it to um, and then add a new certification. So I'll call this one CPR certification. And for my short name, I'll put CPR. Don't have to put in an ID unless I am going to integrate it with another system. I could put a summary. I could put, um, you know, a brochure, an EndNote. We can choose an icon, just like the other one. Okay. Um, Will I allow extension requests where the learner could ask their manager for an extension? Okay. Then um, the next thing, just like a program, is it asks if you um, want to add any of these things. So we'll, we can add a set of courses. Here. And so let's say I'm going to do this one. That's all I'm going to do for this one. Okay, I've got this one course that they have to complete. Okay, then um, save changes. Okay, and again, it's giving me the alert that, hey, if I have this visible, so it's possible that it could affect zero learners, okay, and zero are active. And then um, program assignments. So it wants to know who I'm going to do it. So let's do position this time. And let's choose, um, oh, add a position. Let's see, let's search the school position framework. We should have some in there. Let's do teacher. Well, maybe I didn't say that quite right. All right, let's go to um, school positions. Anything? No. All right. Maybe positions wasn't the best one for me to choose. All right, let's try. Um, well, we did audience before. Let's try organization this time. So I'm going to go to my school district and, all right, we'll go to this and we'll say these people in accounting will, will be added, okay? And then, um, again, I could go, I'll save this, stay, save, and then I'll go to um, any messages I want. And then um, this is a new tab for certifications. So um, when do we, what date do we use for them, their certification to start? And um, I usually like to do the completion date, but it's up to you and your rule set. And then how long is this active for? Okay, so two years from the completion date. Okay, and then how long before it expires do we want to um, let people know that their certification is about to expire and re-enroll them and let them start the new certification so that um, they don't have any downtime, okay, where they're not certified. And I'll say three months before, so I'm giving them three months. So now I have this certification. Okay, so that's how um, certifications work. Um, let's see. 
The last thing that was on my list for today is certificates. So for that, we go into a course. That's where we automatically generate a certificate for completing a course. Okay, so I have um, a little um, security measures acceptance and I have please complete. And so I'm asking them um, to read our E-Class for Learning security measures policy. I'm asking them to accept it, okay? And then we go to turn editing on and add an activity or um, resource. We go to certificate and click add. So this is how we add things to courses. And I'll call it certificate of completion for security measures. Okay. And then um, we have options here. So I'll expand all these and we can kind of look at what we've got to choose from. Again, you don't have to do anything that doesn't have a red um, certificate. So if I wanted a notification, and I could put people, like if we had an external trainer um, who's going to get it, um, I'll put, I want to know who's gotten certified. So I'll get an alert now. Do I want to save the certificates? Yes. Um, do I want to require that there's a certain number of minutes in the course that they had to be before we would certify them? Okay. Um, do I want the date printed? I'll put date issued. Date, how do I want the format of that? Do I want a randomly generated code to deter cheating that I can see um, when I have my record of certificates and who got what code? If I wanted their grade printed, um, the, if they are using outcome reports, if it's worth a certain number of credit hours, do I want the teacher's name, any custom te text that I want it on it. Let's do this, Chris. All right. Um, now there are some pre- um, ones that you can use, sort of like PowerPoint, that have a, a, a certain set look or template. You can also have eClass for Learning create one for you, and then that one would be in the pull-down list. So we can we do a lot of custom ones like that that's not very expensive to do. Orientation, border, um, watermark image. You can also have a signature image that you upload, so a, you know this teacher's specific signature that will be on it. Um, a fancy logo, you can have your logo uploaded here, and we can help you with that, and that could show. Um, and then how do we know if it's complete? Oh, okay, I'm not going to show completion. And then um, save and return to course. And here, one thing that I need to do is um, okay. So what we need to do is just check one setting that restrict access is turned on. So I, I don't want them to have access to this till they've actually completed it. So let's go here. This is in the course settings and make sure that we're tracking the completion here. And we'll say so we've got completion done. It's too far. Okay, let's check one other place before I go there. Um, I'll go to my advanced features and just make sure restrict access. Okay. 
Enable completion tracking. Enable restricted access. Okay, so in order to restrict access to things, um, I'm surprised the default is no for the site, but um, that has to be enabled at the site level. And then I believe we also have to enable it at the course level. And then we can restrict whether or not they see that certificate based on if they did what we set up, um, which is what I recommend. And so, okay, let's go back to my courses. Let's go to the security measure course. Now, um, let's go to just to make sure there isn't a setting that I missed here under course. Enable completion tracking, that's good. All right, looks good. All right, so now let's go back to our course and set up our certificate again. So it's set up here, but I'm going to go to my edit settings and we'll expand all of these. And I'm expecting this wasn't here before because it wasn't enabled. Add restriction. And I'm going to say that they have to complete. So the student must match the following. And they have to do the security measures acceptance. Has to be marked complete. And before I had that they have to click yes, I accept for that to be marked complete. Now it's grayed out. And the user will see that it's there, but they can't access it until they have marked that they agree with the security measures um, acceptance policy. Then they can get their certificate. And based on the options that I picked, it, it looks a little like this. Okay. So, um, and we can also customize and add your logo colors and look to that too. So. Um, that is how the certificate works. And just, um, I didn't show this very well, but if we go under to this security measures acceptance under activity completion, we put that they have to require a passing grade. And the only way this is a quiz that they could get a passing grade um, was if they said, yes, I accept. And that's how I was able to tie it to completion and put it into that they'd only get the certificate if they click that they accept it. Okay. Um, any questions from today? Great. Um, well, thank you so much for joining. I would also say that we have an upcoming webinar on June 8th. Um, and you can get to it at our website from eclassforlearning.com. And from there, if you go to webinars, the, the last one we have for June is Overcoming Blah, Online Instructional Design Techniques to Help All Learners Succeed. Um, and that one is happening June 8th at 1 p.m. Central Time. Um, so we hope that you'll join us for that. Also feel free to um, suggest webinars. A few people did that in our pre-webinar sign-up, so we'll be adding those to future webinars, and those look exciting. And um, we get our best ideas from what people ask for and what they'd like to see. So thanks so much for joining us. And I will be sending out the archive um, to the webinar either later today or tomorrow. So thanks again, and have a great rest of the day.